HM Enterprise. Are you thinking about strong, durable electric and electronic appliances such as electric wires, sockets, modern switches, stand and ceiling fans of different categories, flat screen TVs of different sizes, solar fridges and freezers, solar panels, solar batteries, beaming ceiling lights? Look no further than HM Enterprise. We are open for contracts and supply of materials from Combo to Basse. Visit us at number one Caraba Avenue, Westfield, or call us on. 4396270 or 7713911 HM Enterprise going further HM Enterprise going further This program is brought to you by BB Consultancy in partnership with B4U Properties Your reliable estate dealer BMG Properties Outstanding home providers Kairos Real Estate. Link us and be a home builder. Double Jewelry Real Estate. Operation on your property. Freedom Properties. In Allah we trust. Global Properties. Your innovative property solutions. Him from Tree Company. Always at your service. Combo Real Estate. Operation Shelter Donation. Sultan Traders and Real Estate. We don't bend the truth to make sales. Top Spot Properties. Ideal home for all. Duff Africa Global. Our experience is global. Our focus is Africa. Hello, Assalamu alaikum, wherever you are. Welcome to yet another important edition of the Gambia's Real Estate TV program with me, Abu Bakar Dabo. And this evening I have Mr. Lamin Koma. Mr. Koma, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Mr. Dabo. I've been following a series of uh, the program. I think it's, uh, it's a well-presented program. But more, it, is, it is also a very, very important program because land matters are indeed very complicated. And the program that you are presenting is creating a lot of awareness concerning land. Thank because you. land, like uh, you buy and sell as a commodity, but it's a very specialized kind of commodity. So one needs to understand it very well. Thank you very much and you are most welcome. Indeed, that's why we have you on board <laughs> this evening. And in case you don't know, Mr. Koma was a director of Ministry of Lands and also a commissioner to Not Bank and also a former uh, program director to European Commission in the Gambia. Uh, we'll be taking a short commercial break. We'll be back after the break and we'll talk immensely about how to reduce or minimize land fraud or property fraud in the Gambia. il y a un pôle, un piscine à sa disposition. Il y a un petit peu de sécurité 24 heures. Et si vous voulez investir aussi, vous pouvez investir sur le réseau. Je ne peux pas dire que les hôtels sont très bons. Mais il y a des gens qui veulent que les gens ne soient pas à l'aise. Ils ne soient pas à l'aise. Ils ont des gens qui veulent que les gens ne soient pas à l'aise. Ils ont des gens qui veulent que les gens ne soient pas à l'aise. Ils ont des gens qui veulent que les gens ne soient pas à l'aise. Jadi, jadi, definen ni mana? Nyalain global properties, yang jenis ini ker, arsen elok, akbusen jabot. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, my name is Abu Bakar Dabo, and this is the Gambia's Real Estate TV program. With me, I have Mr. Lamin Koma. Mr. Koma, welcome to the program. Thank you very much once more. And you are most welcome, and I appreciate putting me on the program. Thank, Thank you very you much. Very much. <laughs> uh, well, we understand that uh, landed commodities are the most imp expensive commodity in the Gambia, and uh, the business has been taking its toll around the people, and also uh, fraud being surrounded it entirely. How can this be minimized, land fraud? Well, just like as you said, first of all, you have to understand that land being a commodity is very special and there should be some special importance attached to it. Um, if you say commodity, that means you buy and sell in the market. But like, uh, it's unlike, for example, buying apples. All apples are the same, almost. 
all oranges are the same almost. But uh, there is a saying that uh, land is, uh, is heterogeneous. Um, one land is not the same as the other one. So for every transaction of land, you have to look at it carefully and individually and take care. So, and if you talk about fraud, you have to be able to define that. Because fraud generally means some kind of deception in order to get some gains, either financial or personal. So there are various aspects of fraud in land, definitely, as you said. And yes. uh, one can classify it in various ways. Um, how does it happen? One is uh, uh, falsification of statement about the land. Two is about dis non-disclosure of certain facts about the land. Uh, three is about uh, uh, the agency itself, uh, fiduciary, uh, lack of fiduciary uh, consideration by, 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 by the agent. And there is a third factor because uh, when you consider land, agency in land, there are institutions who are also dealing like um, an agent in land. For example, auctions and things like that, which I call in institutional fraud as well. Yes. So these are the four aspects one can talk about. Yes, uh, unfortunately, all these four aspects uh, are evidently visible in in our day-to-day -day living uh, Gambian businesses. Uh, hidden a particular component about land in the transaction. You've seen that. And also you talk about the institutions, we talk about the agencies. Now I think we can start uh, from the upper hand, that's the institutions. Okay, the institutional one basically is uh, what I call, um, is mainly in auctions and is normally dealt with between uh, financial institutions and the auction departments. Um, and uh, it's something that government needs to look at because it has a very negative impact on, the, um, on businesses and the economy at large. I'll tell you why. Um, you go and mortgage your property to a bank for a certain amount, let's say for uh, $10. Mm -hmm. That's the market value. That is, if you leave it in the market, you can sell it for $10. But of course, banks can't take that value. They take a value that they call for sale value because they don't have time to expose the property to the market and sell it. So that's what they call for sale value and normally it's below the full market price. And it can range anything between 50% to 80% depending on the type of property you are dealing with. Now they, give you a, they normally give you a loan apart from their internal banking policies or financial policies based on the for sale value. Now if the person defaults, they go and get some court action and just sell it at any price. Let's say the for sale value is, uh, is uh, $6. Mm -hmm. The open market five, for sale value is $6. $6. They give you a loan for say $3 million or $6 million. You default, they go and sell the land for $1. I consider that fraud. Because for, every, for land, such an important property, there should be a reserve price for any kind of sale in auction. Normally there is. Even if you in general auctions that you see, they'll say, okay, we are selling this car, the, revi the re reserve price, that is the starting price at which you bid, is say $50. But for land, they don't do that, which is terrible. Yes. And then what happens, you end up, they say, okay, you haven't fulfilled the amount that... Um, the, the covenant, property. yes. Yeah, exactly, so you still pay. So what kind of, uh, that's fraud, I call that institutional fraud and there should be some consideration from the central bank as far as that is concerned because it impacts businesses. This is interesting. It and, is, and nobody is looking at it yes. but it's very serious. No one and I will tell you 90% of the Gambian will not look at these things and this is happening. Mm -hmm. what, we, what we consider fraud most in, this, in the country is uh, let's say selling a property to uh, different individuals and uh, agencies involved. We believed the, the hopes were at the highest point when agencies come 10 years ago believing that okay this may be that would be a, a, a minimization of land fraud or the tendency of selling a different uh, one portion of land to a different individual but unfortunately it's on the rise. It's not uh, instead of being minimized it's escalated. So let's, I think we want to focus more on that side uh, that's the primary fraud, I will call it. <laughs> I like that word, <laughs> primary fraud. I know that's the fraud that's so visible to everybody. Yes. But as I said, that's uh, the other, other components. That's one where you don't disclose, uh, uh, that is uh, where you falsify information. Yes. 
is very common sometimes. Uh, the falsification, you know, when you agency depends on what level. For example, the most common is when you talk about estate agents. Yes. Now, how do estate agents acquire their property? They acquire them from families or kundas or something like that. That could be fraudulent in the sense that they may not have um, adequate consultation with the entire family. Yes. And they can hide that from you. So there is another claimant at the back somewhere. After you buy the place, they come after you. No, 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 this, is, this, this sale is not correct. I'm part of the thing and I've not been compensated and of something like that. Those are issues. And uh, this, this affects the estate agencies? Oh, yes, a lot, a lot, because that's the kind of, that's the kind of uh, fraud that happens. Because sometimes they do it deliberately because uh, the uh, part of the family would come up and go after the estate agent without even declaring that there are other interests in it. That's, I, I want to. I want to rename. I want to rename that part of that's, that, that 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 kind of fraud as a communal or let's say a local fraud. I know. I don't know. Okay. Okay. When you come to the legal aspect of it, mm. maybe uh, the the legal-minded people or persons also will try to hide some sort of some component. You know, because in in the Gambia, it is not very common that uh, buyers will consult. Buyers do not consult a legal or uh, consultant before engaging into properties and in the end they just uh, lines around the court yeah, that, that's, that's true that's true you know that's the aspect of buying from a family or from a communal as you said communal group but um, there's also the falsification the inadequate uh, preparation of documentation you know and uh, for example the most common is to provide only a photocopy of the document yes you know, uh, so that's that's one aspect one has to be careful about. Um, uh, so that, as you said, I think land is so important. One needs to get some professional opinion before you buy it. And because I've come across some some uh, contracts between buyers and sellers. It only favors the the sellers, not even the buyer. Exactly. And exactly. in the end, when they go to the court, the court will just throw it out. Yeah, because the buyer should also get some legal representation. It's very important. You know, the only problem they complain about sometimes they find that a bit expensive. A poor man like me, maybe I can't afford a lawyer. You know, so but uh, that's another aspect uh, that could be dealt with. With your experience as the uh, former line director and also a commissioner. Uh, how long do you think a person can own a property? For instance, without paying your due, a tenant, a tenant come and occupy a portion or a, a, a property in the Gambia. For how long do you think that person can have a legal right owner, a legal right of that property, if in case it's just a tenant? For your own property? Yes. Let's say I have a house and somebody lives there. And somebody for a long lives time. there for a long time. But there is no duration. For, I don't think there is any duration. The guy is just a kind of a, a tenant. Scar. Yeah. Yes, because you know it comes. Uh, I'm asking this question because this uh, I engage a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen cases. Mm -hmm. uh, a tenant living, for instance, you just uh, a farmland. You just ask someone to farm there, and the person, uh, the person who asked you to do it, a friend of your, a friend of a person, and. Uh, the lender died, for instance, mm -hmm. and <laughs> and before the kids grow, I someone just claim it because I've been farming here for more than 30 years. So you, you do not have any right over this because your father gave it to me. Oh, maybe it could be falsified. That falsification needs to be underlined still. Okay, um, that's, that's another issue. You're talking about farmlands and... Yes. Uh, that's what they call use of factory rights. That is, I give you land so that you use it. I'm using it, for On instance. On a yearly basis. Yes. And, and I'm, I'm the one, sometimes what happens is, you lend it to me, mm. I'm using it, and I'm the one paying taxes in my name. Yes, yes, that's fine, that's fine. It still doesn't belong to you. There is, a, there is something, a concept they say, possession doesn't mean ownership. <laughs> you may be driving your car, but you don't own it. <laughs> Maybe it's mine. Yes. I mean, it's my son may be driving, or I may be driving my son's car, but it's not mine, it's my son. It's the same concept. So if I give you land to use, it's not yours. It's just uh, for you to use it for some time. But as I said, the fraudulent aspect comes when people are dis dishonest to say that um, oh your dad gave it to me or I bought it from him or so that's being dishonest so uh, but you need to prove also that um, he gave it to you either by two witnesses through the customary system of witnesses or some documentation otherwise definitely it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not fair on the kids
And people should really be, if, if you think you are religious minded, I mean, you should be sincere enough and honest enough to say that it's not yours. Because from a, from a religious point of view, that's a very serious commitment to, uh, to take somebody's property um, inheritance. It's a very serious commitment from a religious point of view. So people should be very careful about that. But if, of course, uh, that's no guarantee. Moral issues are something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think at this juncture we'll take our first commercial break. We'll be back and we'll uh, talk more about the uh, institutional frauds and the, let's say, even at the level of the, let's say, the, the government. We'll talk about that after the commercials. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the Gambia Real Estate TV program. And with me, I have Mr. Lamin Koma, the former director of lands and also a one time commissioner uh, to Not Bank. And also, he is a former program coordinator at the European Commission in the Gambia. Mr. Koma, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, indeed. Yes, we are talking about uh, how to minimize land fraud and we talked about the institutional aspect and we talk about the, the I, what I call the primary <laughs> component of uh, land fraud. Uh, in all combinations, how do you think this could be avoided or to minimize? If there is possibility to avoid land fraud? Um, just as you mentioned earlier, the first thing is always try to get a second opinion and most probably a professional opinion. Get guidance, legal guidance on the issue. Consult a lawyer and they can guide you. Because the documentation process has to take um, a certain procedure. And the law, that's a legal matter and the lawyers will let you know and do it properly. But also there is called what they call, you have to search for title and know that what the guy is claiming. Because some of, there are some frauds where people, the vendor is claiming ownership and it's not the owner. Yes. That's, that's very common too. Um, that's, that's one thing. Engage, engage professional opinion or professional uh, service. The other thing, the first, the first thing is never rush. Never rush to buy property. Yes, before this escapes me, uh, there's something we called government reserved. We have seen them, we have seen properties uh, in towns or sometimes outskirts of the village or towns, they call them government reserved. These are meant for what, purposely, for a layman? Actually, uh, it's just a planning concept where you reserve for something. It's just like some savings. Take it as some savings that you may need later in the, later in the day. Somewhere. But in most cases, the government, the central government may not need this. So there's, there's something they call you can apply. An individual or a group of people can apply for government to give you or to allocate that land for you for, for maybe a sort of... A, industrial purposes, commercial purposes, and so How do well, you there, there could be a change of views, but reserve lands are very important because um, populations are growing and the need for um, social services also grow. You need to build hospitals. For example, in here, where do you find um, good football fields for youths? They've all gone. If you want to have a good market here, there's no space. If you want to build a good hospital, there's no space. And these things are reserved for that. But they are not for the immediate future. They are for the long, long term. 
maybe 50 years. Because we've yeah. seen we've seen spaces yes. that individual will occupy in no time, and we understand these are government spaces or these are reserved spaces. But when I talked about this, I've talked to two, three people. They said you can apply for the government to give you. Well, and I you suppose develop you can and, apply, but yes. uh, the policy should be rigid enough so that uh, we don't just de reserve a place. If you go to pipelines, yeah. Bigelow, mm -hmm. you can see count, you know, uncountable reserves lands and now people are turning to, it to their individual properties. Well, that's government policy. As I say, the government policy... No, you were, uh, you were once a director. Yes. So how do you think? Maybe something changes? Corruption? Um, I wouldn't know. It depends on the government because um, why would you want to de-reserve something that... I'll give you an example. Go to the forestry at Brikama. It's pathetic. Yes. That, thing, thing, that took over 50 years to build and develop. And suddenly all the forest cover is gone and it's not replaced. That was a specific area. And now we are talking about the Salaji forest. Yes. So it depends on the type of government you are dealing with. You don't, because whatever you do now, you are, you, are, you are depriving the future generation of their rights. And that's not right. Very that's sad. Not correct. Whether from the official point of view, the, the technical point of view, or from the policy point of view. But government reserves the right. In the whole of West Coast region, only Buffer Zone is, could, be, could be called... Exactly. Uh, During our time. Yes. That place, yes. in fact, it was Sardaura's... Uh, the former president's idea to create a buffer zone. By then, I was a junior person at the um, at, uh, uh, at the land office. That concept came from him. You know that that old man was smart. In in, in the former regime, no, 22 he years, was smart. Twenty-two years. Can you imagine? Tw for, for twenty-two years, there was no area that was exactly, carved yes. for reserve yes. for for let's say recreational centers. Yes. Because what he said was, in the, in the West by then uh, you had all the, all these uh, growth centers, Bakau and all these Latikuna and things like that, and they were growing. So he thought there should be a buffer zone where, because what they call ribbon development. Yes. There was development just along the road and things like that, then expanding. So he thought there should be a reserve called a buffer zone for future development. But if you go there, the, most of it is gone. It's unfortunate. Very for, unfortunate. I think we are playing with the lives of our future generation. And it's not fair. Deforestation is I'm telling is you, it's, it's just it's unfortunate. Totally unfortunate. Where and do you think the problem lies? Ministry government, of... It's government's responsibility, yeah. entire government. It's all about leadership and who wants to... Look, Sadauda was at that level, took the leadership and said there should be a buffer zone. There was this Banjo declaration about nature reserves. Yes. It, so it's about the leadership of any government to do that. And it's happening all over the world. So it depends on the kind of uh, leadership you have uh, to have a vision and also indicate what kind of uh, uh, development um, programs you ask for the future. That's all. Nothing else. The, and but uh, they reserve the right to do anything. They can change the reserve. They can do anything. That's why sometimes constitutional issues are important because they can protect those rights. Constitutions should be able to protect those rights and, and the process. That's why um, normally they say in Africa, we don't need strong leaders, we need strong institutions. Because if the institutions are strong, any leader can't just come and change the reserve like that. There has to be a procedure. And in some countries, the procedure requires public participation, where they decide. I remember in Turkey, there was a big debate about changing a park into something. Yes. People said no. And it happens everywhere. That's why you have this Greenpeace movement and things like that. Yes, if you, if you look at the, the Land Act, they said all lands belong to the state. Uh, the Sukuta scenario, uh, Salaji, uh, there, are, there are still a feud between the government and the, and the residents of Sukuta uh, with regards to Salaji, the Salaji forest. Um, the community still insists that the Salaji belongs to them and the government carved an area, a huge chunk of land that, uh, that is owned by the AMRC and other parties owned by the Ajib, but that the government um, allocates that to Ajib in, the, in respect of compensation. And the Sukhota people are saying that no, the Salaji belongs to them, to the Kabilos, different Kabilos. And if you look at it, it is not being respected because the Sadiji, Sukhote, or the, the community has already sold out 90% of that reserve, mm -hmm. or of that carved area belonging to the 
maybe the MRC purportedly and also the Ajit. Yeah. Um, what is the concept there? The lands belong to the state and the community. Do you think that the, I, I the question have, is, mm -hmm. do you think the government has the right over any community that the community claimed ownership of any chunk of area? No, the government, let's put it this way, government yeah. has absolute, absolute right anywhere in the world to claim any land or property, no doubt about it. Okay. But there should be some procedures, that's why institutions are important, procedures and processes how to do it, and there should be due consideration to pay compensation. You don't take somebody's property and you don't pay it. Now, for me, there is a lot of confusion about what is state land. Personally, this is my personal view, I think the declaration of state land simply means it's a custodian kind of relationship for administration, administrative purposes. It doesn't mean ownership per se, okay. where you can do whatever you like. We have found coming, and governments are doing that so that they can have proper administration of the land. But it's not to impose their will on the people just anyhow. Because it's state land, I just come and carve it out. They, were, they used to belong to communities. And, they, and that's why we have the alcalos and impact safos and things like that who deal with these things. But of course these days the thing is, oh, it's state land, so we do whatever we like. I think it should be channel, uh, challenged constitutionally. That's my opinion. Okay. It should be challenged. Uh, there's another important thing that uh, when, you, when we talked about uh, reserve lands around the coast, the sea, uh, it is understood that um, the government, through the GT board, uh, depriving a whole lot of the community co co communities in the, let's say, the Batukunku, the Tanje, the Sanyang, uh, not to claim or not to have total rights over that community, over that, that portion of land around the sea. And uh, it is said that, it is announced that that place has been leased to the GT board okay. for many years ago. During your time, there is a history. To that. During your time, yes. Where um, do you think this list has stopped? No, that's no, no. Um, there is a history to this. We need to know the background first. Yes. When tourism started here, I think some stu Swedish students came in and they found the place attractive, and it, tourism started growing in the sixties. So World Bank thought that they should reserve the beach area for tourism development purposes, and they invested in infrastructure around that area from. Sunwing area mm -hmm. right down to Senegambia. If you see, that's where the main infrastructure of tourism stopped. Yes. So, but they thought maybe, as just like you say, people with foresight, you say, okay, maybe later in the future, let's as it, it. it can go up to Katong or there. So, therefore, let's lease this area. Up to Katong? I think somewhere, all along the beach anyway. Okay. I, I can't get this specific, but all along the beach. But I think that's one important thing. In the lease. Yes. I, if I am right, I think it's indicated from the high water mark, yes. about 100 meters or something like that. But now it's 800 meters. No, wait a minute, <laughs> even 800 meters. But the high water mark then, yes. some 30, 40 years ago, is different from now. Yes. So that should be redefined. So if you use the same uh, high water mark stuff, maybe what they are claiming is not right. That's what I'm saying. That's my opinion. You can use your what is, is it geodetic mapping or whatever and look at it what's yeah. high water mark then and what's high water mark now no, are different very different in fact with time then the high water mark will be at uh, the main uh, senegambia or oh, the is, main Tanger exactly yes. so it doesn't make sense i think you see policies need to the be reviewed. Designed, exactly you know but you don't start to deprive citizens of what they should have and some of sometimes our technicians that's their problem they are not flexible Look at it properly. And if I were to own any property, I'll challenge it legally. I'm serious. They should challenge it legally. In fact, that's the beauty about democracy. Challenge it. What's the high watermark then when the lease was being made? And what's the high watermark now? Encroachments. And if you want to lease, we go and measure and make sure because there are certain standards that the fence should be away from the center of the road. That was happening. In fact, that's why that's what's the problem right now with this YC roads mm. because most of the properties didn't uh, they didn't um, abide by uh, the policy requirement of a certain uh, distance. distance exactly but that used to happen then but now the capacity is not there go there maybe they don't even have a vehicle 
And if yeah. they have a vehicle, maybe he's... Uh, yeah, they, no they, they, they cried this. Exactly. That's electric, electricity... So don't, you know. don't blame them too much. Uh, but who they to are, be blamed? I think they are, they, are, they are overwhelmed. Who to be blamed then? Um, I'm not, because we need, we need to live in the standard... It's not a question of blame. I think it's a question of taking responsibility. Yes. Taking responsibility in the sense that if you see this matters urban uh, growth as a priority, you invest in it. That's why we're having a lot of all these flood and things like that. It's not only, it's, some of them are man-made, you know. They block all these areas. That's why the water has no place to go, so they flood the place. So it, I think there should be uh, some urban, urban planning, new yes. urban plan. The last urban planning happened during the time of late Dr. Boro Suso. And that's, those are the standards used now. And those standards are out of date, but they are still using, using them. Okay, and that's what was since the 1980s. It was a German project. Are you still using those standards now? I mean, that's ridiculous. So it's all a question of capacity and technical competence, maybe. And they, they failed to, maybe you can say the institutions or the government failed to, to work with the same space as the world is moving. Or the Gambia, the population uh, is growing. As I said, it's a question of commitment and prioritizing. Because governance is about making, uh, setting your priorities right. That's governance. Whole lot of problems. Exactly. You set your priorities. Right? Maybe urban planning is not their priority. That's you, why. That's a mess. That could lead oh, to well. a mess. <laughs> the sickness, you, you look at the sickness <laughs> level, look at the fire outbreaks, the accidents, know, earthquakes I, I and stuff. So they're not, they're not considering all this? Ah, well. Then we may be doomed then. then what, what do you think that could be the solution? For so all this land frauds, the physical plan, you know, it's too much. You know, right now it's, it's like I've been lectured. <laughs> I didn't even know where to start. This. Okay, let, let, first of all, is maybe take this opportunity to indicate that land matters are very, very important. Yes. Land matters have created a lot of social problems, social cohesion. All over, if in uh, international, they've caused wars. So I think governments should start looking at land properly and try to prioritize it. We need some good planning and renew our planning policies and regulations. That is extremely important. We can't just let things flow just like that. Otherwise, we're going to keep having problems. You know, so you have to invest now so that you reap the benefits tomorrow. But if you, if you leave things to just flow as they are, you just create more problems. Look at the flooding. All over the place. Jam, I, I, Jam, I, I, you, you ask them, they'll say, oh, it's climate. It's not climate change. No. Man-made. It's man oh, Come on. If you, you, you have proper drains, they will drain and go away. But if you don't have that, everybody's clock. Go to the, uh, is it, uh, uh, where is this place called? Uh, uh, London Corner Junction. There's a small bridge there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, it, there's a building there. So it shouldn't have been there. You know, those are passing. Passageways for, 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 for water. For water. And it's happening all over. And most of the areas that are, you go to the furrows, they, they are blocking the waterways. That's why, that's, and water has to find its own way. You can't block yes, it. It can has to water. find a way to go. So that's what is happening. So I think it's to strengthen the institutions that are uh, uh, responsible for planning and, the super, and land administration and to build, to build their capacities, individual, human resources required. The last training program I know about planning was again in the 80s. Since then? That was during the time when um, Boros Suso trained about 18 or something, planning guys, because the idea was to train them so that they could be going to the regions. And some of those are now the permanent sectors. One of them I know is permanent, another was working at tourism, uh, even the retired. Since then I wouldn't have anybody being trained. As a, even as a surveyor at the caliber that we used to know. I don't know anybody trained for land administration at the caliber we used to know. I don't know anybody trained at the, as, as a planner, urban planner, the caliber we used to know in the 80s. That is not there. It's so, just not there. And what happens if the guys who are at the technical level now retire? What happens? This could be disastrous well, because... It's if, all about foresight and planning. If land is the most expensive commodity and in fact not expensive it's expensive but it, it all it is also the commodity that is well business well transacted daily in this country and it involves huge money now if the government is oversighting this this could this could lead to 
uh, a communal well, fight. I tell you one thing: um, rectifying errors in or bad plan is more expensive than doing it properly. I'm telling you, because right now, if you want to rectify all these urban drainage problems or re urban renewal stuff and things like that, it's serious. Look at Banjo. The issue is not just concrete, the road, putting concrete on the road. It, it makes it nice, but that's not the entire solution. Okay, quickly. You have to, to look at it in a more comprehensive manner. Back to our communal land administration with the alcalis. Okay. Um, I talked to a specific alcali who said, yes, um, the land problem became more deep, more inter uh, intensified during the last republic, the Yajamis Republic, because uh, the owners, the original owners of those properties, of those landed properties, it's like when they ask or when they allow the new settlers to live in a certain area of their land, called a village, Yajame will, or the Yajame government, the former regime will give them that authority with stamp to sell prot to sell pro uh, properties and they do not own it for instance in the case of the jambur okay uh, new settlers came mm. called themselves a village it's a village a head of the village is now entitled to sell and stamp properties i know i know where you're coming from it happened even this registration process in manuar is the same thing you see originally we know from generations there were original settlers we can't dispute that people who came there and settled in the place that's a mistake or that's one no yes. it's not um that's one then then after that other people come in and then they want to settle around yes. and the type of people who come in are one either they are looking for farmland to feed themselves mm -hmm. or they are running from some disaster from where they come from mm -hmm. All right, there is a war or famine there and they want to resettle somewhere. Or they are of a religious group that they want to have some isolation. They can meditate with their, with their, with their talibis. These are the kind of three groups that you have. And when they come to a village, the village will give them a place to settle. And naturally, you can't settle a small community without giving them a place to feed themselves. Mm -hmm. All right? They give them those places to feed themselves. Normally, there, of course, during those days, there is no written kind of documentation on that. But normally, there are always historical records which are oral, but they are authentic, to tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. After generations, especially, okay, let's fast forward to the time you are saying, which is the last regime that happened. There was a declaration suddenly from the president that wherever you are is your property. That when everybody went bizarre. So people who were originally uh, newly settled claim advantage. exactly wanted there and because if you are the purpose of Alkali is to is, is a local land administrator. That's why they have a stamp and that's the authority to authenticate the transaction. Now they claim these new settlers claim to be Alkalis and therefore they were given a stamp. Once you give them stamp, that means you are giving them authority oh. to transact in land land that they don't own this is where the problem is it's very simple it doesn't but and now regime change not the two, owners two, the owners are now reclaiming it yes two <laughs> things two things they have settled there for generations you yes. can't kick them out that's out the old the the, uh, the the previous the original settlers can't ask these guys to go out no yes. they have generations there so you should protect their rights but protect the rights of also the original owners. Let them not sell the land that doesn't belong to them. They can have their alcalacy, but not the stamp. And also retain the land that has been given to them. But there is also another side of the story. The guys who originally gave them land will sell all the land that they own yeah. and start wanting to sell the land that they <laughs> gave them. <laughs> so that's why I say protect both sides, the rights of both sides. Protect these settlers, their rights, so that nobody takes their land that was given to them for some time. Yes. And protect the rights See, of this one. Land is a problem in the West Coast region. <laughs> because people believe that they are not working, they depend on lands. My father's land, my father's property, so... I'm a Kianka, go to Badibu. People uh, sit here and then we to transact in land over there as Badibu, Badibu people. <laughs> well, uh, that's all we have for you, Mr. Bojan. Okay, I said, Mr. Mr. Koma, please quickly, uh, your, your farewell, last words. Well, it's just to emphasize that we should take land very seriously. And first of all, I must congratulate you for the program you are doing. It's creating a lot of awareness. And Thank I you. only hope there is a lot of exposure to, the, to this program. 
because it teaches people a lot of things and you take your time and the passion you take and the dedication so I must commend you for that and I hope you continue and also the research you do is very important consulting the people and talking to them um, generally land should be taken extremely 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 seriously it should be given some kind of priority as I said rectifying issues of non-planning is more expensive than rectifying uh, doing planning properly so they should look at that right now and come up with policies to take care of that they should also try to enhance the capacity of land administration and planning whether human resources or other type of resources i think that's what we need and i would um, urge the government any government to look into that properly successful cities or so that is a deliberate policy nothing happens by magic you know you have to sit down and think yes. that's what we don't do we want to just do things on a, on a ad hoc basis it doesn't work like that the world, world, world was not even created like that. everything is organized so if you don't want to organize of course it's havoc. if you want to use the 80s 80s of planning exactly. for 2020 uh, oh, come on nice. that's just backward so thank you very much indeed uh, for 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 having me on this program Welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Koma. This is all we have for you, viewers. I am Abu Bakar Dabo, and it's been Mr. Koma, uh, like I say, the former director of lands and also the uh, one time governor or commissioner, then we call it commissioner at North Bank, and also program coordinator at the European Commission in the Gambia. Thank you very much. This program is brought to you by BB Consultancy in partnership with. Before you properties, your reliable estate dealer, BMG properties, outstanding home providers, Kairosu Real Estate, link us and be a home builder, Double Jewelry Real Estate, operation on your property, Freedom Properties, in Allah we trust, Global Properties, your innovative property solutions, Him from Tree Company, always at your service. Combo Real Estate Operation Shelter Donation Sultan Traders and Real Estate We don't bend the truth to make sales Top Spot Properties Ideal Home for All Tough Africa Globe Our experience is global Our focus is Africa